Welcome. We're going to go through birds 31 through 50. That's my required uh, statement before I start any video. The list is here of the last 20 birds. This is bird 31. What stands out to you? The fish. I'll say that. Uh, the, the brown, fish. The brown okay, bird. well they don't always have fish, but they have a, a very prominent large beak that's used for fishing. There this is know. called the belted kingfisher. King King belted because it has kind of this belt along the breast of, you know, kind of a slate, darker color. There is a little rufus on the flanks. And pretty stocky bird here with usually a fairly spiky head to its appearance. It's a mohawk, my guy. It looks a bit like a mohawk. Bird 32. That did not work out very well. Bird 32. We've seen this guy, haven't we? Yeah. Yep. He's hanging out by the lake right now. I've been seeing him for a few months. This is the Great Blue Heron, or GBH, as they call it. Uh, it is a very coastal-looking bird, very tall, has these head feathers that come off. There's not really much for me to say about this one because it's so distinct compared to any of the other birds on this 50-bird list you need to know. Uh, very long legs, very big beak, two or three feet tall. I can't remember which class it was, but one class we actually saw it catching and eating fish out of the lake. So he's here hunting right now. We've seen this bird too in a few classes. This is the yellow bellied sap sucker. Yellow belly. Prominent black and white stripings on the face, along with red on the top and neck. What family of bird does this look like? It looks very much like a woodpecker, and it acts very much like a woodpecker. And in some cases, like with this black and white speckling on the back, it even has kind of a resemblance to a downy woodpecker that we've seen. Yellow-bellied sapsucker. All right, this is another kinglet. I would not expect you to be able to identify whether it's the ruby crowned or golden crowned kinglet without seeing the crown, all right? There might be some other slight markings on the body that discern it fairly well from the ruby crowned kinglet, but I'm not worried about that. Um, I would show you a crown in the pictures, or at least enough of one for you to see, that as opposed to a red crown or crest, it has kind of this fiery orange. Do they always show their crest? No. They really only do it when they're somewhat aggressive. Um, but maybe we'll get to see one. They're around campus. All of the, most of these are around campus. All right, these next two are going to make the red-tailed hawk picture on your bird test not quite as easy of a question. We've got two hawks. This one's the Cooper's hawk. In terms of distinguishing it from the red-tailed hawk, it does have a lot of this orange and white checkering pattern on the breast. That makes it very different from the red tail hawk that has kind of this black, kind of stripy cummerbund or belt that the red tail hawk has. Now, to discern it from the next bird we're going to talk about, which is the red shouldered hawk, the Cooper's hawk has this kind of dark gray on its back, which looks very different from the back of a red-shouldered hawk. This is the third hawk on this list of 50. The red-shouldered hawk is obviously going to get its name because of the red feathers along the shoulder. 
but it also has a kind of black and white kind of variegation, I guess you could say, um, with its feathers on its back, and the tail is not red, like the red-tailed hawk. So its front, if you could see it, but you can't in this picture, has a lot of that orange that the Cooper's hawk has, so it's not always easy to tell the difference. I promise, hold my hand up, I promise on the test that we have in two weeks, February 5th, I will try to give you as distinct of pictures as possible. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, moving on to bird number 37, the American kestrel. Looks somewhat hawkish because it's a raptor, but it's smaller. And you can tell, I mean, there's a lot of coloration here that you don't see on any of the hawks. And it's the only other kind of bird you would possibly confuse it with. Uh, but these vertical black bars on its face are going to be one of the things that stand out. It's smaller than a hawk. It's not a big hulking bird like the hawks tend to be, but that's the American kestrel. Black vulture. How's it different? Black. Yeah. <laughs> Very good answer. The black vulture has a black featherless head. Whereas the turkey vulture has the red featherless head. There are some white markings that are lacking here that the turkey vulture has. So sometimes you can use those markings to distinguish it in flight. But if you could just see the head of this bird, it will tell you which type of vulture it is. This is the black vulture. And apparently more aggressive than the turkey vulture. I think somebody's video addressed that. Yes, I thought it was. Okay, we've got two more sparrows. This is the white-throated sparrow. The white throat is pretty prominent. The yellow on the head is pretty prominent. So that's what you'll be looking for with the white-throated sparrow. If we get a chance to see these on campus, those are the markings that are going to stand out the most to you. If you look at the wings and back, they look a lot like every other sparrow. Sparrows are tough. Put a star next to this one. It's probably the easiest sparrow to get. No barbecue stain, but not exactly a nice clean white breast like, say, the chipping sparrow has. But that yellow marking with the white throat is definitely going to be your... Uh, diagnostic feature for the white-throated sparrow. This one, at first, you might think you'll confuse it with, say, what? The, yellow. the goldfinch. The goldfinch. But I would encourage you to look back at the beak, which isn't a great feature to rely on when you're out birding. But the beak is not that big, stubby, thick finch beak. A much thinner beak here on the pine warbler. Pine warbler. Also, there are two wing bars that are white on more of a gray wing than a black wing. So, this is one you will confuse, could confuse with the goldfinch. But uh, look for some of those details. It might help when you put your little Quizlet together to review to actually have these pictures kind of side by side at some point to look at the two. Okay, number 41, the common grackle. I don't see a lot of grackles here. I think you probably could find them around like the Garden Lakes area where you tend to get a little bit more waterfowl. They do look kind of like Raven crow. Uh, yeah, crow to starling was probably the one I was looking for. No speckling like the starling has, but there is some of that weird iridescence. And there is also kind of a distinct 
different shade to the head versus the rest of the body. One way you can easily tell a grackle is to hear it, and I won't even attempt to try to replicate it, but it sounds like some kind of weird clockwork machine. It has this strange mechanical call that it gives. Um, if we were to go to Jekyll, or had we gone to Jekyll, you would see these everywhere, but not quite as common here in Floyd County. The grackle. All right, the next one is the brown-headed cowbird, another pretty plain-looking bird. You will see these in flocks of other darker-colored birds, like the red-winged blackbird, which you often see in large numbers. You'll just find some cowbirds hanging out in the group. And the brown-headed coloring here, it's where it gets its name, the brown-headed cowbird, and it's gonna be probably your best distinguishing feature. Brown head on a dark colored bird, brown head cowbird. These are what we call parasitic nesters. This does not help identify them, but the females find other birds' nests, lay their egg, usually a single egg, in another bird's nest that already has eggs in it. The egg's bigger, and it hatches a little faster, and the chick that comes out immediately pushes all the other eggs out. And then a lot of times you might have like a bluebird come back to the nest, and there's a chick in there, it's not her baby, it's a baby brown head cowbird, and she just spends all her time feeding it. Because a lot of times these chicks are nearly as big as the mother trying to take care of them. So they just have other birds raise their babies. Very unusual. All right, the fourth sparrow, and the last one of the 50, is the house sparrow, right here. This one makes a lot of the sparrows a little bit difficult. Not many distinguishing features except for the face. You've got the white-throated. This has more of a black throat. And this white patch about the head with a gray cap is about as good as you're going to do. The sparrows are tough. There are many, many sparrows in Georgia. Uh, we got four on this list. If you spend a little time on them, they're not too much of a challenge. I think you'll be okay, but you gotta spend the time on them. The pileated woodpecker. Huge bird compared to other woodpeckers, and woodpeckers are pretty big. I had never seen a pileated woodpecker live until last Saturday when I walked through Kudzu up there where there's that opening. If you've ever been up there, there's kind of a clearing. And right at the edge of the clearing, on one tree, there were three of them. Did you take a picture? And I did not take a picture. I was a little bit too far away from my phone to really... I, it would not have been a very good picture. And I had two leashes in my hand, and it would have been tough. But as we came up, they flew off. But the red cap here is definitely going to be kind of your most prominent distinguishing feature. And unfortunately, in like a bird quiz, we won't be able to... It would be harder to show this, but a pretty big bird. I think you'd be surprised at how large they are. Uh, we will probably try to do a bird walk up to uh, the top of Kudzu there one day and just see if they're there. Because there's some good hawks out in the woods too. The pileated woodpecker. All right, here's a, the easiest one of all. The only owl I'm putting on the list. The great horned owl is number 45 here, so we're almost at the end. You should be able to distinguish an owl from all the other types of birds. We do have other owls in the area. This is one of the common ones. And it's got these little tufts on its head that uh, gives it the name Great Horned Owl. 
Here we have some waterfowl. The coot, the American coot, has a very unusual bill shape, black with the red eye. Again, this is going to be one that's pretty easily distinguishable from the other birds that we have on this list. The only other waterfowl, I think, on the whole list of 50 is the last one, the wood duck, but it is very different from the wood duck, which we'll see here in a second. The brown creeper. I've never seen one in real life. They're hard to find, apparently. They are usually going to be out in the woods usually around tree trunks, and usually very, very shy and elusive. There is what kind of unusual thing about this bird that you see? The beak. Yeah, that sickle-shaped beak. This is a really long, thin beak. Other than that, not a really prominent feature that you could point to. Kind of just a dull gray to brown patchwork of colors on the back that make it look a little bit like other birds. But that's the brown creeper. And another bird I actually haven't seen, even though they're more common and probably easier to see, is the meadowlark. Big black triangle on a yellow breast with speckled shanks there. The yellow goes up in the face. Pretty big field bird. Um, I have I can't recall ever having seen one. It's uh, up there on the list of birds I'd like to see. They are in Floyd County, but maybe one day we'll see them. And the last two here. This is a bald eagle, but it's a juvenile. That's right. I left this picture on this list of pictures just to show you how different a juvenile can be and how there's a much larger challenge at bird identification out there. I think the bald eagle is probably, the adult bald eagle is probably the easiest bird any of you could identify if I were to show you a picture. On the bird test, I will use an adult mature bald eagle, but the juveniles of a lot of these birds make bird identification much more challenging than even the level we're looking at. And finally, the wood duck. A very prominent coloration to the male. Pretty plain for the female. Uh, I will use the males on the test, so as long as you can identify that very unique looking bird uh, as a wood duck, you'll be fine. And again, just to kind of make one last comparison before we stop, you can look at that male wood duck versus the American coot. They do not look anything alike. And they are the only two waterfowl on the list. So, February 5th, Friday, two weeks from right now, is your quiz on these birds and the 30 birds that we did previously, all on one 50 bird quiz or test. You can hit stop there on the recording.